Hello and welcome to Jay and Joy Adventures. So today is our summary video of our three months in Thailand. So we've recently got back from our three month trip. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we said this video is basically just a full breakdown pretty much of where we went, what we did, what yeah. we spent. So we thought we'd just do one video basically summarizing everything. Um, yeah, basi yeah, basically... Uh, it's not going to go into great detail because obviously everything is on the channel. It's mainly going to focus around the things that you didn't see. Yeah, and we'll do we will do like a, a cost breakdown because usually that's the thing that everyone um, always wants to know when it comes to like traveling, especially going places At for a long, do. a long period of time. So the beginning of our trip started when we flew from the UK. So we flew from Heathrow and we went straight to BKK, so Bangkok, and then we got a separate flight from Bangkok down to Phuket. Yep. Um, we literally got that the same day. I think our flight landed. Oh, we were we were like two hours late to Bangkok, and we nearly missed our yeah. flight to Phuket. Our flight got really delayed. We had we... to wait for our luggage as well because obviously it wasn't oh. a connecting flight; it was a separate flight. So we had to wait for our luggage and then go and check it in again. It wasn't too bad because I mean we thought we'd left enough time, but um, basically our flight stopped in Amsterdam, and Amsterdam Airport, as you you probably know all of, since like the summer, has been really really bad um so yeah that basically messed up a lot of things but thankfully we didn't miss our flight to Phuket so we flew straight down to Phuket um we decided to do that just because it was quicker it was literally like a one hour flight um, yeah and it, yeah it was really easy it was it was also we didn't exact we didn't exactly book it months ahead but it was still like was it cheaper or the same price as like trains and stuff that we saw? Oh, it was cheaper. Um, it was cheaper. Yeah, so usually overnight, the overnight like sleeper trains, um, they cost about £25. Yeah. Yeah, so the, I believe the flights to Phuket cost us £21 each. Yeah, it was, tw it was £21 each. Um, so yeah, it was a really good price. So that's what we did. And yeah, I mean, it saved us loads of time as well because the sleeper trains are about like 11 hours ish or something about well they're that. sleeper trains so they go so they go overnight <laughs> yeah exactly um so yeah so we went down to phuket and we spent a total of two weeks there initially which i mean i think that was, i think that was good we saw we saw mm. a lot of phuket i think that's about the right time if you want to really explore the island yeah, if you just want to if you want to see like the main things that you want to see you know there's probably a dozen or so places yeah. in phuket that you would want to see total yeah, I would say and that... And I would say um, that two weeks yeah. is, is a good amount of time to do that. Yeah, I think we spent the right amount of time there because it just meant that, especially because our journey getting there was so long, we yeah. needed like a day or two to actually recover yes, and absolutely. get into the time difference a bit better. So after our two weeks in Phuket, we then headed by ferry to Koh Samui. Yeah, so that journey was quite long. We had to get... That, um, was, that was nine hours, was it? Or was uh, that eight? That was... I think eight eight hours total ish. Eight hours. So we had to get we got a taxi to get to the bus station yeah. in Phuket Town, and then we got it was more of a coach actually, and then we got a yeah, coach a at the bus station to Surat Thani, and that was um, I'm thinking it was about six hours, maybe five and a half. Yeah. Um, just driving, and then we waited. Actually, we we were a bit late that day, so we literally ran onto our ferry. And the ferry was about an hour, hour and a half. Like it wasn't very long. That was probably the most. Yeah. That was probably the most comfortable part of the island hopping that we did. I think. Yeah, the because ferry because the ferry was really very comfortable. comfortable. It was really the plush. seats. Were, the seats yeah. were very comfortable. The ride was very comfortable, and there was a very lovely little mini mart in there. And it was really well air conditioned, which was so good. That was very. That was very very nice to have. That was really nice. And then when we arrived at Got Samui, we had to get another taxi um, because we were staying in Chiang, which is actually the opposite side of the island yeah. from where the ferry port is. But Got Samui is actually fairly small, so I think yeah. we made it across the island in about half an hour, 45 minutes? Yeah, it was half an hour, and that's also because you have to kind of... the So the main road that connects the island, it's kind of like a dual carriageway road, yeah. it kind of goes more around, it doesn't cross, um, doesn't go straight across, because in the heart of the island is loads of waterfalls and mountainous mm -hmm. parts that you can't cut through. It's quite... I, I actually really enjoyed um, that part of Got Samui was driving through it because you there is a there are a couple of roads through kind of the middle of the island where um, either side is kind of chasms of of mountains and that was really really nice to drive through. It's got such gorgeous views. Um, 
but yeah, so on Got Samui, so as I said, the ferry that we arrived at was on the other side of the island, but actually by Shuang, there's a much smaller ferry port, mm -hmm. and that is the side of the island closest to Got Pingan, and that was the next place that we went, so we caught a ferry from there to Got Pingan, it was literally half an hour. Oh right, yeah, it, it, was, yeah. it was super short. So we, the other reason we chose to go the ferry that way as well is because that ferry was shorter because it was obviously on that side of the island and it actually went to Hat Rin, which is where like the full moon party and stuff is yeah. on Gok Pingan. So from, so really, really from Kotsmoy, we took the Hat Rin Queen Ferry. That's it, yeah. So that is from, from that f um, ferry port and it goes from there to Hat Rin. Yeah, well, and when you arrive in um, Gok Pingan as well, um, it's definitely worth getting the the song tails. Okay, so it's a hundred baht flat rate per person. Um, so after we had finished in um, Koh Phangan, we then headed over back to mainland um, to Krabi. So the journey that we took from Koh Phangan, we got another ferry. Yeah. Um, and we went back to Surat Thani, and we got a really long coach from Surat Thani all the way down to Aonang in. Be. Yeah, it's it's odd really because if you look at it on the map, Ao Nang looks closer than Phuket, but it's it's not that much different in coach time. It's I think actually it's longer. Yeah, it's yeah. longer. Driving down to Krabi is just a bit longer. Um, yeah, and I'm not. The, some of the roads on that coach was literally horrible as well. Oh yeah, it was shaking the, like. Yeah, so the co the coach was basically there was loads of road works going on down this um, section of road. And there was a section of it where basically we had to go over the middle of the road that split the two, the split the two lanes. But apart from the uncomfortableness of some of the journey, it was still really convenient, and the whole thing literally costed us like eight, nine pounds for the whole transfer. Yeah, it was, it was. It's so cheap. Yeah, so Al Nang, we were there for about five, six days. Yeah, we were there for just under a week. Just under um, a week. Yeah, so we stayed in Al Nang. Um, we stayed literally just off of Ao Nang Beach, mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was a great location. The beach was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, the Ao Nang Beach is mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah, it was definitely one of the best beaches. And so we, that's where we stayed, but it's actually only about half an hour to drive into Krabi Town from Ao Nang, so it's not far away. It's not, it's not long at all. We drove into Krabi Town and um, I think three times in total we three went. Three times, yeah. Yeah, and we like checked out the Krabi Walking Street that was there. And it was actually really good fun. There were like some performers and things. So after we spent the time in Ao Nang, we got a transfer down to Gotlanta, which is quite close to Krabi. The journey that we took to Gotlanta was really different as well. Because... It was. So it was yeah. all kind. It was all land based, basically, more or less. Yeah. Um, so basically, we took one singular. Was it? I think it was five hour total trip, wasn't it? Yeah. So. The, this was a this was a lot shorter this trip. This was in a one minivan. The minivan picked us up from our hotel. So actually, we did change minivans in Krabby Town. So we, we changed it like the bus, the, the bus station, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. it. It was the Krabby bus station. So we changed to just another minivan, and that minivan literally drove us all the way to, to our hotel in Gotlanta. Yeah, but the actual getting on Gotlanta was the weirdest thing. It was kind of like a ferry, but it's. For like cars and it's stuff. A, yeah, it's a it's a car ferry basically. Yeah. So it's a it's a flat it's a flat, flat barge, and yeah. you can fit cars and vans on it. Yeah. And then it basically it basically drags itself across the, well, in this case it's the ocean, but it kind of looks like a river because it's very small. Yeah. So we spent a total of five days in Gotlanta, during which um, you probably remember we spent most of the time basically chilling out. Yeah, we really relaxed. We did explore the island, you know, for a couple of days. But it takes isn't... one day to it takes yeah. one day to to really explore the island. The island is tiny. It's basically half an hour top to bottom. If we literally drove all around the island, around the whole thing, um, like about two or three times to be honest, like actually looking around, it is genuinely just a really quiet island. Um, we literally saw like two tourists, and we did have some friends that happened to be there at the same time, mm -hmm. but that was a total of like maybe. Maybe five other people. Yeah, we that didn't yeah live there. <laughs> yeah about half. Do it was literally like half dozen tourists. Yeah, um, I don't think we would have wanted any longer on the island. I think no, I think no, I think that was about perfect for us. Yeah, because after Gotlanta, we headed um, back to Phuket, 
um, only for only for a couple of days basically. So that mm -hmm. was basically a layover into us leaving south and heading all the way up to Chiang Mai. Yeah, so we decided to fly from Phuket instead of Krabi as well because Phuket's a little bit cheaper. Yeah. We found that the flights were just, it was literally like £20 different flights. Yeah. Our flight to Chiang Mai actually had a layover in Bangkok for yeah. about an it hour. Was, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't a super long layover. I, I, can, I can certainly say I've had longer layovers. Yeah. It was a super short layover. It was really nice and easy and... So the flight, obviously back to Bangkok from Phuket is about an hour, and then from Bangkok to Chiang Mai it's about an hour and ten, hour and fifteen, it's something yeah. along those lines, just a little bit over. Um, and yeah, so then we started our next section in the north, so it's a bit of a different, different Yeah, it place. was. So we spent a total of two weeks in Chiang Mai, um, during which uh, I tried my hand at driving a gear bike, which I've never done before. I I, re I really enjoyed it. It was it was definitely a new experience for me and very daunting at first because it wasn't even roads that I was used to now because the North's roads are very different. Yeah, in the Chiang Mai roads are actually quite similar to Bangkok. It's just ever so slightly less busy. Less yeah, um, less busy. But there's still loads of vehicles. I mean, I wouldn't recommend someone else do this. I would say that if you're not at the very least a reasonably experienced driver, do not drive in Thailand. Honest, it, it, we looked it up, it's rated second most dangerous roads in the world to drive on. Also, don't be, don't be afraid to say that you haven't driven a bike before because most of the people that you rent from, if you have, they're used to tourists coming you've never driven before and they'll give you like a quick 30 minute lesson yeah, just how to use it. There's some of them that offer like a 60 minute lesson on top oh, of yeah. it if, if it's your first time there. Mm -hmm. That's really common, especially in the south. Yeah. And do not forget, by any means, if you are going to drive in Thailand, do not forget your international driving permit, license, whatever, whatever country you're from. Especially in the south, because that's where the police are most likely to stop you, talk We to got you. stopped three times total in the south, was it? Um, or was it twice? I think it was twice. So we got stopped, stopped yeah. a total of twice. We got stopped once in Phuket. It was both in Phuket. Oh yeah, no, it was both in Phuket. It <laughs> Phuket was, is because we went both one. times. Yeah. It's the most notorious place that you're going to get stopped. Yeah, so you, the police will set up um, kind of checkpoints that they'll stop every, you know, all the bikes and stuff. One of and the they'll biggest things as well is if you've not got your international license, um, it's literally five pounds from the post office. Yeah. Get it, but you can only get it if you have a driving license. Yes. If you don't have a driving license, you can't have one. Um, so that's what you need if you want to not get fined and forget. And the other thing as well is. Don't drive shirtless because that's actually illegal. Yes. So if they catch you driving shirtless, then they will fine you. And, and do not drive without a helmet if you're the driver. Yeah, so it's also a legal requirement to wear a helmet as the driver there. Um, but the passenger does not for some reason, but that is not a reason to ride passenger without, without yeah. a helmet. You should still wear a helmet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that is the best way to avoid getting fines in Phuket is wear your helmet, keep clothed, and if they do stop you, just have your international on you. You literally just, ca hand just it carry to them. it. Or just carry it on you. It's quite small. It's a little. It's, it's literally the size of a passport. Yeah, um, the size of a passport. You hand it to them. They'll just check it and they'll say, yeah, cool, whatever, and let you on, and they they're not going to try and charge you anything then. Yeah, so we spent a total of two weeks in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we actually got sick while we were there. Uh, so which... I got sick week one, <laughs> and then you got sick week two. So you got sick um, actually near the end of the first week. So you got sick for a couple of days. Yeah. Because you were still sick when we changed locations. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, because you were there for about two days, and then it was actually my birthday. And then yeah. it was about a day or two after that when you actually got sick. And then... You were sick for a few days and then we actually happened to change location so the first place we stayed was actually within the Chiang Mai old city and then we moved out a little bit further for the second week. Mm -hmm. um, both locations were great to be honest. Yeah they, were, they, they were, were great. Yeah they were different, they offered different things. Chiang Mai is literally like an amazing city, it has mm -hmm. everything, so much food like absolutely amazing food places. Um, but anyway at the second location I then got sick in the second week and I got really bad. I was like more sick than you. Um, and I was sick for pretty much the whole week actually. I we really had to I had to push myself to really like get out, get out and, and do, do stuff. things, yeah, I um, remember. Yeah. But so luckily that was not fun. <laughs> But luckily, pharmacies in Thailand are very good and very reasonably priced. Yes, it was really good. I mean, you got 
you went and got me loads of different stuff. And so I much... went, I went okay. to, yeah, so I went to the pharmacy on two different occasions. Uh, so yeah. basically when you go to them, if you know what you've got, like if you've got a cold or the flu, then you can, there's always a pharmacist there that speaks English at least a little bit. Um, so you can always, you can always tell them. And also all kind of medical terms and things are, um, it's pretty universal. Yeah, it's yeah. it's all in English. So that was that was more or less our time in Chiang Mai, just yeah. us being sick, unfortunately. Um, we did we did still manage to see a lot of Chiang Mai itself as as a city. We just didn't manage to get out too much to yeah. to see other things, to see things around it. So after Chiang Mai, we headed downwards towards Bangkok, but we stopped off at Ganjanapuri. Yeah, so we stayed there for about a week. Um, yeah. And we again had actually a bit of a different journey this time. We got an overnight coach. Which yeah. was arguably one of the best things, best travel things that I've ever had. It was so cool. It literally had like, it, we actually got a VIP coach. Yeah. So the seats almost fully reclined. They were really, it was like, imagine first class plane. Yeah. In a, in a coach. Yeah, pretty much. Um, like we actually got snacks while we were on the coach and a couple of drinks. And we did stop off and we got like food vouchers yeah. included in our ticket um, to stop and grab some like food and stuff, which was really good. I think it left at 6 p.m. and we arrived at 5 a.m. 5 a.m., yeah. Um, so yeah, we arrived so early, but um, we actually managed to check in early at where we were staying. Yeah, we did. Really good. We were, um, yeah, we were quite no, lucky. No extra cost. Although, for checking in early, we traded in for a brick bed. I made the mistake of jumping on it, and I swear to God, I nearly dislocated my shoulder. <laughs> I, I was I was winded for a solid minute after doing that. It was literally a hardwood floor in a bed. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we got a coach from Ganjabri yeah. to Bangkok, and that costed us 110 baht. Yes. For a two and a half hours journey. Yeah, we got to the bus station, then took another bus into the center of Bangkok, oh, yeah. where we then got the BTS. Yes, that's it. So the bus to take us into the center of Bangkok cost us, I think, twenty-five baht. Yeah, twenty-five baht from it the is bus so station cheap. into the center. The buses there are like ridiculously cheap, although we did get stuck in a lot of traffic, so... That's the only thing. That's the only issue with the buses and things there is you yeah. do have to be prepared to get stuck in a bit of traffic. Um, but... But the... So yeah, cheap. Yeah. But, the, but the overall solution to that is to use the BTS, which is the overhead sky train. Yes. So there's the BTS and then there's the MRT. MRT. The MRT is the underground there. Mm -hmm. That is also very good. The BTS is quicker though and more frequent, I think. More frequent and it's a bit more connected as well. The MRT yeah. is not quite as connected, but it does go to certain places where the BTS doesn't. Yeah. So sometimes you do have to use both. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much sums up our whole route that our we took. Yeah, our total trip yeah. around Thailand. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our route section. The next thing that we're going to cover in a bit more detail um, is going to be our budget yes. for the trip. So we did have a few questions about that. Um, so budget-wise, before actually leaving, you know, in our preparation to going, um, we came up with the budget of £1,000 per person per month. And that's not including our flights to get there. Yeah, but that, that was that was kind of our spending yeah. and anything that we do while we're in Thailand. So that so that budget does include like our internal flights, our transfers, transfers. everything it's just not in flights Thailand. to and from Thailand. Yeah, we found that that to be just the easiest way of encompassing it all without. Mm -hmm. It was easier than us trying to come up with a total trip budget just because And it's also splitting things by, you know, transfers and hotels yeah, and it's just, spending. It yeah. was easier just to put a set budget on the whole thing. Yeah. And then put certain budgets on things like hotels. So we budgeted twenty pounds per night. And that's total, so total. It's ten pounds each. Ten pounds yeah. each per person. So the budget of a thousand pounds per person per month came out to about 30 pounds per day per person so 60 pounds total so yeah we we came up with the budget of 20 pounds for our accommodation for every night which makes it a third of the budget but we literally only came close to that 20 pounds about three or four times the whole yeah, trip yeah barely yeah we were kind of staying in and we were st we were staying in pretty good hotels as well pretty nice hotels yeah and they were kind of anywhere between i think our cheapest was 10 pound per night 
Uh, yeah, our cheapest was ten pounds per night. I didn't feel like we were missing out on anything by giving ourselves mm. like that smaller budget. Yeah, I mean, it was it literally was to the point where it felt like we were really splashing out when we stayed somewhere that was eighteen, nineteen pounds a yeah, night. Yeah, it got to the point yeah. where yeah. It was crazy because when we went and um, get the first hotel we stayed in, um, it was £18 per night. We did a video on that as well. Mm -hmm. And that was a really nice hotel. And then we switched and stayed in a couple of villas. And it was literally like £12 a night per person. person. Yeah. Which was actually more expensive because our budget, like I said, was £20 roughly. And so that came out to £24. But we completely recovered from that. It wasn't like it blew our budget. Yeah, or something. No, yeah, yeah. This was this was the thing is that with our budget, we budgeted so that we were we never felt like we had to um, kind of restrict ourselves. So yeah, we, we gave we, ourselves a lot of flexibility. Yeah, we gave ourselves yeah. quite a free budget. Not in the sense of you know just spend as much as you want, but we never wanted to do something or be somewhere and then say we can't do that. We don't have yeah. the budget. That was why we kind of gave ourselves that budget of a thousand because in theory you could really travel to Thailand on like six hundred pounds a month and you would oh yeah you could do it easily. So you can you can travel to Thailand on a super tight budget. Yeah, but it just depends if you how much restriction you want. So yeah. we didn't want to be too restricted, like we knew we'd wanna buy souvenirs, buy like we bought, we bought loads of stuff to be honest. We bought like, um loads. two whole suitcases worth of Things. things yeah but we wanted to be able to do that so wherever we went we found things we liked we could just pick it up and yeah. not be too worried so when we were tracking our budget we obviously had, it was about 30 pounds a day per person but we also tracked it kind of within the month as well um so the budget we found was it was a really cushioned budget actually yeah so obviously we budgeted originally six thousand pounds in total for us and in total we actually spent five thousand and sixty pounds across three months yeah we so saved uh, almost a thousand pounds yeah yeah um and then so that was the total of everything we spent within thailand all our travel food like literally everything included um and so the total trip cost so this includes all the costs before going so that includes um visa costs uh medical insurance Flights, flights, yeah, was six thousand one hundred and twenty-four pounds and eighty pence. Is the total cost of it's everything of the trip? It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad realistically. Yeah, so that was how much we came home having spent, and that was because our flights were four hundred and twenty-five pounds yeah. each. So that extra thousand pounds is pretty much almost just the flights. The cost of the tourist visa was. Was it 60 pounds? No, it was 30, wasn't it? 30, yeah. Yeah, 30 pounds for the 60 days um, to go there. And then we did the visa extension for 30 days afterwards. And that was another 30 pound? Yeah, but that we included in the cost within Thailand. Yes. Not outside of it. Um, so yeah, so if we go, so we ended up spending 5,060 pounds in three months. Yeah, so we went with the budget of a thousand pound per month per person. And we actually ended up spending eight hundred and forty pounds per person, roughly that, yeah, on average per the three months anyway. Um, so yeah, and that was us definitely like indulging here and there. Like we didn't always eat super cheap. No, you know, we, we ate at restaurants. So it wasn't like we really restricted our spending. To be honest, there was ways that we could have spent more. But we also could spend less. I'd say we went Definitely. kind of pretty much about in the middle budget wise. Pretty much, yeah. Um, I mean, I was pretty happy with how much we ended up spending. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I was definitely happy with how much we came out with in the end. Yeah, so that was really good. Obviously, spending less than you originally anticipate is a really good thing. It's, yeah, it's always very nice. Um, so yeah, this moves on to our last kind of segment of this video, and that's going to be kind of our top tips and advice for anyone looking to go to Thailand for the first time. Yeah. I think the number one most important thing that we would probably recommend is do not ever give your passport as a deposit if you're renting a bike or anywhere. even or even hotels sometimes ask for them as well for deposits yeah that's re that's really weird if they do so usually so the law in Thailand is if you're a tourist wherever you stay they need to just scan your passport and basically register you as staying there yeah. um, just to prove where you are basically if the police for some reason needs to find you you know they know where you are um, so if they ask for a passport to keep, do not let them stay somewhere else. Uh, that's a really big red flag. Um, but yeah, if a motorbike place asks you for it, do not give it over. I just asked them if they do a cash deposit because a lot of them will. 
yeah, usually the cash deposits that we gave was either two or three thousand. Yeah, it was. We didn't pay more than three thousand. Yeah, another kind of piece of advice that I think we'd want to give is when it comes to Thailand, especially like Southeast Asia, travel and everything, food poisoning is always really heavily mentioned. Um, obviously food poisoning is always possible wherever you go, um, but the main tips that I would give about food poisoning in Thailand and ways to like avoid it as well, don't actually be worried about ice. Um, ice that has holes in the middle, um, they're all safe. Ice from any supermarkets any and any um, like restaurants you go to, they'll always be safe. Yep. And even in vendors or little street food places, again, just check your ice. As long as it's got little holes between the ice, it's completely safe. And the water that they give you in the jugs at street food actually is safe as well, usually, yeah. because in Thailand, um, they get deliveries of filtered water in really, really big bottles, and they just pour from that into the jug. So usually, just look around. As long as you can see one of these huge bottles, you know that the water that they're giving is filtered. Either filtered. that, or just look around. If you see other Thai people drinking it, like they they know yeah. not to drink their own water. You know? Yeah. Usually, if there's a place where they like give people food poisoning, all the Thai people know. So always eat somewhere where there's other people. It's like the the easiest way to tell is absolutely if there's a lot of people there then it's worth going and it'll probably be really delicious as well because they'll, they'll, they'll know all the really nice places to eat um and the other way with food poisoning as well is obviously if you're at markets and things just don't buy anything that's pre-cooked because it might have been left out all day you don't know yeah just make sure you don't buy anything that's pre-cooked and that's the way that you can stay like the safest basically definitely so yeah i think all those ways you avoid any food poisoning we didn't have any while we were there no we were fine um, but I think kind of segueing on from food and um, market stores, um, something that does go a long way, not necessarily for you, but for um, the locals that you're going to be interacting with, is um, just learning to say hello and thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you will already know hello because we start every video with it. Yeah, so you're looking at Sawadika for a girl. And Sawadika for a boy. Or you can just say Sawadika. And that's still polite. Yeah. Um, and thank you, very similar. Cop kun ka for a girl. Cop kun ka for a boy. So yeah, literally just being able to see those words puts the biggest smile on the locals' faces. They love. They love yeah. to see tourists um, kind of getting involved, trying to familiarise themselves yeah. and learn the culture of the place. Which I mean, if you're travelling, is you know one of the biggest reasons you do it. Maybe. Yeah, one of the one of the biggest reasons to travel. But um, it's also really useful with haggling with vendors. Definitely. Because they'll always be a bit like, oh, okay, and they'll they'll have a bit more fun with you as well. I think. The, I think I think they're more they're more kind of happy to haggle with you as well, especially if you've made that effort. Yeah. So it's always really useful. Just literally just hello and thank you. It actually goes a really long way there. Definitely. Yeah, and it just makes them feel appreciated. I think. Yeah. Um, we hope that anyone who is on their way to Thailand or going to Thailand has a really good time. Obviously, we, we had said, we had we, a great time. Yeah, we had an amazing time. Um, yeah, and if you have any other questions that you that we haven't answered, just pop them in the comments below or message us on Instagram, um, and we'll definitely get back to you if it's something that we know we haven't answered for. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, we hope you guys have enjoyed, and if you have, be sure to go down below, hit that like button, and consider the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the little bell icon. Never miss a video from us. Until next time, we'll see you on the next trip.